Hello and welcome to this afternoon taste challenge. I have two American rye whiskeys and they're both aged four years. Here is Temp, oh, here is Old Overholt. And it was introduced in 1810. Now this version of Old Overholt aged four years was introduced in 2022. 86 proof, and it's non-chill filtered, age four years. I bought this at uh, Doornax, and it was like $19.99, and then I turned around a week later, and I saw it at Total Wine and More for, for a, dollar, a dollar less, so I could have saved the dollar. I could have saved a dollar, but I didn't think about it. Well, I didn't think about going to Total Wine, which was silly. But uh, brown bottle, you can see it's got that Jim Beam standard uh, bottle design, one of their standard bottle designs, which they use for old overhaul. You'll see the same bottle design with Kessler, Beam's 8-star, uh, old Granddad, Old Crow. So it's a common bottle design, okay? Red cap for this product. Now here is Templeton Rye. Templeton Rye. It also aged four years. Now it's a very pretty embossed bottle. This runs about $32, but my friend David found it for $18. Gave it to me for a Christmas gift in December 2023. So that was the deal, huh? Um, it's produced in Indiana, though. It's produced in Indiana, and it's bottled in Iowa at Templeton Distillery. It is not listed as straight rye. It's just listed as rye. So that means it could have coloring or flavoring added, and very likely does. But I cannot definitively say that because the website does not uh say whether it is flavored or not flavored um it's a wooden cap with a neoprene synthetic rubber stopper all right so it looks nice now remember you know like we're talking about about 32 dollars versus 19 so is it going to really be 13 dollars better I don't think it's going to be better, but uh, we'll see. Uh, so far, I've, I've gotten six wins, one loss, and one tie. So I've gotten it right six times. I got it wrong once, and I tied once. I didn't declare a winner because I couldn't tell them apart, and I said I'm not going to declare a winner. I'm not just going to go on a 50-50 shot, and if I get it right, say, oh, look, I got it. No. If I can't tell them apart, I call it a, a draw. Of course, it meant the Templeton lost because it was a significantly higher price than the one it tied with. Kevin Johnson says, I am rooting for old Overholt. Fair enough. Kevin. Now, um, the Templeton looks more brown than amber, and the old Overholt looks more amber than brown. But they're essentially the same. I can get Templeton rye here in my town, but I think it's a barrel pick. Um, the Therns has it. It's a barrel pick, so uh, they not. Oh, yeah, I know it's not the same one. It's a Templeton rye, but the one they have is uh, a different proof, a different proof and a different uh, age. So, you know, I don't know if I can get the four-year-old. I might be able to. I haven't really actively looked for it since I was given to me, so there's really no incentive for me to keep looking for it. Old overhaul. Uh, yeah, Walmart sells it. I don't know about Matherns. I don't, they don't really carry a lot of rye whiskeys at Matherns. When Dixie might have it, their rye section is okay, but I don't recall seeing old, old overhaul there. But Matherns, uh, but uh, Walmart definitely, definitely has it, and they have a good amount of it. You know, I wouldn't buy it because I got it, I don't need more. I got uh, eh, about it. 40% of the bottle left. All right, let's go with the aroma. The aroma.
Yeah, a little bit of oak, a little bit. A lot of vanilla, a lot of sugar, sugar water. Whiskey, to me, I say this a thousand times, whiskey tastes like sugar water to me. It does. Somebody was saying today on uh, alcohol eggs, you always say that every time somebody brings up Rolling Rock, that uh, ever since they moved, they uh, got bought out in 2006 that it got improved. I said, I do always say that because in my opinion, it did improve. I thought it was kind of mm, strange tasting before they got bought out, but I thought Anheuser-Busch improved it. Now he's claiming, I talk to people every day that say it was better before the buyout. Who talks to anybody every day about, about Rolling Rock? And secondly, who are these people? Well, bring them on, let them talk to me because I'm not seeing it. Went from chalky tasting and strange to, okay, regular taste, and I get that. It's ordinary product, but they got rid of that chalkiness, which to me was an improvement. Um, but, yeah, I always do say whiskey tastes like sugar water to me because, you know why? It tastes like sugar water to me. <laughs> yeah, so... Mm. Hmm. Ooh, there's a burn in my nose. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know what. I think this has more of an oak, an oak wood, oak wood, um, more than vanilla. But on aroma, I'm not really sure. But I kind of remember Templeton being sweet and vanilla. So I'm thinking this must be in my left hand it must be templeton and my right hand must be a uh, old overhaul but i'm not really sure yes old overhaul did start as a pennsylvania distillery and it was there for 100 about 200 years but um it was less than 200 years but close to 200 but it, it got bought out and then their distillery was abandoned and now all their recipes and trademarks and everything are, are, are carried on by Jim Beam Company in Kentucky. So they moved it to Kentucky. Um, didn't seem to hurt the sales. I don't know if it was ever a really big seller, but it has a following. Milwaukee Miller White says, not a rye drinker, but I'm enjoying a Modelo Sandia. But that's the strub. No. Strawberries diffuse fresia. Picante, I believe you gave it a 3.5 out of 5. 3.5 out of 5? A 70? No, I would have never given it a 70. Watermelon chili. That's the uh, fresh. Oh, the, oh, oh, yeah, the watermelon. Yeah. Uh -huh, right. But I, it was higher than a 70. I can look it up right now. I rated it on uh, April 23rd, uh, sorry, April 27th of last year, April 27th, almost a year, a year ago. Oh, no. I gave it an A, like more like a nine something out of 10, four and a half, 4.6, 4.7 out of 10. Yeah. Gave it a much higher score than a 70. It's a really delicious product if you are ever looking to drink a, ch a a chilada. I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really be looking to drink that. Tell you the truth, but uh, I do try them, and they're usually pretty good, especially from Modelo. Dos Equis makes some good ones too, though. I can't lie. Uh, yeah, so mm -mm. oh, sorry, not sure why I thought that. Maybe I had one too many while watching it the other day. Yeah, you might have because. Uh, 
it was pretty dang good. Now there's that new strawberry one. I could have bought the strawberry the other day, but uh, I had bought too many things. I was like, no, nah, I need to cool it. I got too many things in the fridge now. I, I'm going to bust my budget for the month. It's only today's only April 15th. We got half the month, so I need to cool it. All right. There's definitely oak with this charred oak. That's there's no getting around it. There's vanilla. There's that sugar cream. Yeah, it's it's pleasant. It's nice. Um, it's got that rye spice, mentholated rye spice. I really like it. I mean, I really like it. Okay, so that's a good product. But on the other hand. You go buy 10 rye whiskeys, most of them are just at random. Like, you just randomly buy 10. They're going to all be good, but pretty much. I mean, like, can you really find a bad one? I, I, was, I guess you could. I, I've never had that experience. So, but, um, so then the question becomes uh, not, oh, are they subtly different one from another? Yeah, they usually are. Not appreciably different, honestly, but maybe subtly different. So then the question is, uh, Is there an appreciable difference? Well, typically there is not an, an appreciable difference. The difference will be marginal. And that's what these marginal. Now, some people get on into my, oh no, they're so different. They're so different. Everything they drink is different. Every, every rye whiskey they try is so profoundly different. And I'm thinking, I don't know what they're talking about. Maybe they got more ability than I do to taste it. Because to me, it's like, uh, this thing is not different. I mean, not in any serious or meaningful way. Do I see a lot of people doing blind taste tests? Not really. And then they'll gum it up by doing like five. They won't do one against another. They'll line up five whiskeys or rums, whatever. And they're going here to there, here to there, here to there. It's like a circus around and around and around like the clowns out the car, you know, the clown car. I'm like, how can you possibly make sense of what you're doing? How can you figure this out? You're tasting five different bourbons, five different rums. You're all over the place on this. And, you know, and this is number one, and this is number two, and this is number three, and this is number four, this is number five. It's like, you know, you need to cool it. You don't need to be in that big of a rush. And you could take that one, uh, uh, let's say, Let's say rye whiskey since we're on it right now. Take the one rye whiskey and do different videos. This one against number one. This one against number two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, cool it. Makes sense. You don't play a basketball tournament against every team at once, do you? I watch college basketball. I go to games. Okay, so they have the tournament, the, the conference tournament. They don't all play. They don't have one team that plays everybody at once. Uh. And baseball at the beginning of the season, I have these round robin tournaments where one team will play three others. And those three other teams will also play the other three teams. And then they'll compile a record who won the most games. Well, the team that won the most games is the champ of the tournament. Common sense, right? The team that did the worst might have lost all four games or all three games. Well, they're the worst one in the tournament. They finished last. So it really needs to be more sensible i think with some of these crazy taste challenges mr amazing says good evening ron i'm taking a three-month break from alcohol have an extra cold one for me today a three-month break that sounds like a good idea um some other people said they really uh went overboard and they need to take a, a lifetime break i had some people tell me i need to take a lifetime break but i'm afraid it wasn't like they were doing a few taste challenges too many it was like they were off the chain with the drinking. You know what I'm saying? Like really bad. Well, you know, some really bad stories and their family was involved saying this cannot go on. You know, this is really bad. You know, so I, I and, and the one guy told me I some people have trouble with self-control. I said, I think that's true. I know it's true. 
So it's that gets scary, you know. If I do an extra taste challenge, it's not like I'm gonna fall down in the next room. I had somebody in my family, she broke her ankle. She was falling down, like literally falling down from drinking. I was like, man. It wasn't like she went out partying and had a couple of drinks. No, no. She would stop when she was out cold. And I'm like, ooh. And she 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 just gave it up all, all together. She's like, I don't want, I don't want to do this. I'm giving it up completely. And so she gave up drinking and uh I think she's a lot happier. Because if you don't have a stop button, it's Bad. Okay, I agree. Have you reviewed Yingling Lager? Oh, yes. Uh, you talking about the traditional or the premium? Or the or the light? Because there's there's a lot of Yingling Lagers. But yes, I have. It's hard to give a fair score if you're inebriated. Ha ha, says Kevin Johnson. I know that. You always seem to be quite sober, though, when you do your reviews and challenges. What? It seems that way, doesn't it? No, but you know what I'm saying? I try to be in, in check. Sometimes things might get a little wishy-washy, but I try to keep things in check. And um, But, man, you know, uh, A, if you're loaded and trying to do a taste challenge, that's a bad problem. And secondly, if you're doing five or six together, that's impossible. I see it. I must have watched, oh, four of them in the last two days. And he jumping from one to the next, one to the next, one to the next. Oh, this, that, and the other thing. This one got this, this one got. I said, how you go keep your thoughts together when you're doing all this? You can't. Oh, the traditional. Yes, I have reviewed it. I think more than once. All right, more tasting. I try to talk to people about it. You know, they don't maybe receive it too well. You know, they'll say, well, you do you, I'll do me. You know, like I, I didn't say it ugly. I just said, okay, I just thought it would be a good idea to put it more in order. But if you want to be disorganized and all over the place, it's your channel. Do what you want. And then you'll, but why make videos complaining that people don't watch the channel? Maybe it's because you're all over the place and it's, Almost impossible to follow. Seems like a decent. Oh, I'm trying to be constructive criticism. You know, constructive criticism, not na not nasty or hateful. I'm never like that. Read my comments; they're always like the same. I usually say, oh, "I tried that before; it was pretty good." I mean, somebody says your your comments are so like simplistic. I said, I know, but that's the way I speak to people. Like the way I write comments on people's videos is the way I speak in person. You know, I just say that kind of stuff. Like I tried that before. It was really good. That's it. And I say now if they I don't elaborate, you know, I don't like hold people down, pin them down with a long, drawn out talk about it. People got things to do. They don't want to hear all of this. They probably didn't even ask if you reviewed it. I'm watching the Orioles play in the Minnesota Twins right now. Are you a baseball fan like myself? It's great to have playing in the background. Have it playing in them. Well, I have been to every I have been to games at every major league baseball park, so that might indicate where I stand on that. I know the Orioles were aggravated because they they had a rough weekend. Good evening. Busting into the case of Valentine Ale. She has bar. I wish I had some Valentine Ale to review. They sold Valentine India Pale Ale in Louisiana in 2014. Maybe it was 2016. It was one of those years, and uh, I was so excited. I was like, man, this IPA, it was, it was Valentine IPA. I was like, it's so good. Well, of course, since I liked it, they stopped selling it. I think they stopped making it. They still make the regular ale. Did you enjoy in uh did you enjoy Orioles Park at Camden Yards? Hope you get to enjoy some national Bohemian beer as well. I did enjoy Orioles Park at Camden Yards in Baltimore, Maryland, and I went there like four times. I think it was three. No, but I really think it was four times. 
I have to look at my tickets. I, I save all the tickets. This is Birdland. Seattle Mariners, Tuesday, June 9th, 2009, 7.05. There's one ticket right there. This is Birdland. I always like going there. The four times. I, I say it's four times. Maybe it was only three. I went on a tour. They gave me this pin when I went on the tour. Look. I went on a tour of Orioles Park. Ballpark tours, Orioles Park at Camden Yards. I saved it. Of course, you had to pay for the tour, but... I said, I'm going to save this button forever, <laughs> this pen forever. Uh, so, yeah, it's great. I loved it. It's been open since 1992. A little nip of VO gold, says Barbara Robinson. Oh, yeah. Seagram's VO gold, the eight-year age. That's the that's the good one. Oh, although the regular is good, too, six-year age. These tickets are a piece of history, Jay. Glad you have enjoyed your time in Baltimore. They are a piece of history. And I have even brochures like stuff from the tours. Like when I went there, I saved it. any kind of paper. I saved it. So like uh, let's see here. I saved napkins from Comerica Park. Like literally napkins. <laughs> For the hot dogs. Tropicana Field. Fan Guide. Oakland Athletics Stadium Tours. Oh, what a tragic story that is, huh? But there it is. They even gave me a What did they give me? A calendar or something. They were amazed that I wanted to see their stadium. They gave me all kind of stuff. Um, ballpark guide, tro Tropicana Field, another one. The New York Mets sent me a letter. Seattle Mariners. They don't give stadium guides anymore. They just say, look it up on your phone. You can't say that. Let's see. I'm trying to find. Oh, Petco Park. San Diego, Texas Rangers. Oh, this is a classic. Minnesota Twins. Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome Stadium Guide. Last year, right? Of the Metrodome. And this was the one from 2002, Official Visitor's Guide to the Metrodome. Bush Stadium. I'm trying to find Baltimore, though. You asked about Bush Stadium. Uh, Phillies Convenience Guide. Phillies Convenience Guide. I've been to the Phillies a number of times. The old Veterans Stadium and the new one, Miller Park. Okay. Ooh, golly. Of course, Yankee Stadium. We've got old and new stadium guides. Tigers, Yankees, Yankees. This might be the old one. Yeah, this is the old Yankee Stadium fan guide. But don't worry, I got Baltimore somewhere in there. New Orleans Saints sent me a letter back in 1982. All right, um, but anyway, um, Saints and Budweiser. Remember when Bum Phillips was the 
coach of the Saints. He didn't do that well, but he was actually built. He actually built the team up so that they did go to the playoffs a number of times in the eighties. He actually developed that team. But I don't know, but I don't, but don't worry. I got Baltimore in here. I got more than one Baltimore play, thing, but it's too much to go into right now. Okay. Cannon yards. Oh, let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that India Pale Ale was a winner. He sure was, Bart. Uh, Camden Yards is a great ballpark. Sure is. Do you have a favorite ballpark to visit? People ask me that every time. No, because they're all so interesting. I can't say a favorite. I mean, Wrigley Field is interesting. It's great, but they got a lot of jerks that go there. You know, some of these people, they need to go to a frat party instead. But uh, Fenway Park is very nice, but you get the same kind of people there. But um, the White Sox is kind of plain. But it's nice. I mean, I'm not saying it's not excellent, but you get more families going to the game to watch the game type of thing at the White Sox instead of people trying to make a snake out of plastic cups because they drink it in the bleachers. But uh, yeah, I can't I can't say. I really can't say what's my favorite. It's too too complicated. Nice collection. Do you plan on having any more mystery beer challenges? Those are fun videos to watch, says Wesley S. Thimer. Yes, I actually did a mystery taste challenge three days ago, two days ago, and you'll see if he guessed it right. He did a good job, but he didn't get, well, you'll see. I would love to sift through all your major league baseball memorabilia. That stuff was like gold to me. Come on, you can admit it. Camden Yards is the best. Haha, <laughs> only kidding. I am biased. It has a, I, have, I know where to park for free. Now, your, park, your car may not be there when you get back, but I've literally parked for free there. Like what I said, four games I've been to, I parked, I parked for free three times. But it's been a while, you know, since I've been there. It's been like over 10 years, so maybe now would be bad. I don't know. Was, Baltimore has been bad for a long, a long time. You know what I mean? It's not like the Indianapolis Colts said, this city is awesome. Let's leave for no reason. No, there was reasons, you know. But, yeah, I like Camden Yards, though. Orioles Park at Camden Yards. The real name. The stadium is called Orioles Park at Camden Yards. Camden Yards is the location. The stadium is called Orioles Park. All right. Uh, and don't even ask me about all the college. They don't even ask me about all the college football stadiums I've been to because we don't have that many hours. But uh, have you had New Hampshire beer? Says Playtone. Oh yes, I've had a few. Sure. This one seems to have more wood, not more body, not more uh, a dry or a sweeter finish, nothing like that. They all some. This one has more wood. Now, would I prefer one over the other? No, honestly, with these two, I can jump back and forth every other day. You know what I'm saying? Monday, Sunday, drink one. Tuesday, Monday the other. Tuesday one. Wednesday the other. Thursday one. Friday the other, Saturday one, Sunday, and then that in that pattern, I wouldn't get tired of it, and I wouldn't uh, resent one of the other. So no, uh, um, I think they're fine. So that means what? That means Valentine, Valentine got me talking about Valentine. That means Templeton loses. And why does it lose? Does it taste worse? No, might have flavoring added, like I said, but that's that's just what it might have. But um, well, if they use flavoring, they use good flavoring. Okay. No, it's not because it tastes better or worse. It's because the price is much higher. I mean, if you insist on paying $32 for the bottle, you pay the $32 and do your thing. But I'll just pay the $19 and be happy with it, it's, it's, especially when the flavors are not really that different. So $13 is is something to think about especially when there's no 
no real important difference. I mean, there are differences, but they're not important. Uh, Baltimore has such loyal fans, enough of them that, so, sorry for going on and on. Yeah, you got me off track. What are you doing? You're messing up my challenge. Um, and then they got that one section where the guy sprays them with the water. I wouldn't want to do that if it was a cold day. They'd be spraying people with the water, and if it's like 50 degrees there, I'd say, oh, uh, uh, uh. Old overhaul bottle and bond is amazing. A bit pricey, but wow, it's 97 out of 100 for me. I bought it for $24. I've never tried it. I gave it to my friend David. He seemed disappointed. I said, you're disappointed, but yet you've never tried it. You're calling it an old man whiskey and this and that, but you've literally never tried it. And then he, I went to his house last week and I was like, there it is in the cabinet, never been open. Now it's a gift, so I don't give people a gift and insist that they drink it, but still it would make sense to, in my opinion, this is me talking, it would make sense to taste a product before you give a grade or give a, a judgment about it. That's That's my peculiar way of thinking. I have a weird, maybe you think that's a strange way of thinking that you should drink a product before you give an evaluation of it but that's the way i operate other people got different ideas okay so i think this is the old overhaul and it's marginally better which means it really wins since it's a lot cheaper and it is the old overhaul and that puts me at at uh at uh seven wins one loss and one tie so i've only got it wrong once like i said the tie was i just called it a tie i didn't even try to make an attempt I didn't even make an attempt to um, guess uh, the product because I didn't think it would be fair. So um, seven wins, one loss, and one tie. And I don't think that's bad. And I think uh, I have a few left. I have a, I do have a few left. And then it's on to bourbon. And y'all will be excited about the bourbon. Maybe my palate is a bit unrefined, but I really enjoy old overall. I don't think it's un unrefined at all. Uh, maybe mine's unrefined too, uh, Kevin, because I also like it. Now, if anybody wants to see this beer that I bought, let me know. But otherwise, I'm getting off the air. We've gone over 30 minutes. So here we go. I'm getting off the air, but I did buy a new a new old beer today. A new old beer. You would know what that means if you saw it. But anyway, uh, yeah. So if you want to see it going once, if you want to see it going twice, if you want to see it gone, okay, well, never mind. But you'll see it when the um, review gets posted. And I think it's going to be very exciting. Your blind taste challenges have been impressive. Your palate seems to have been improving over time. Uh, maybe it's been improving, but I think, I don't think it's so much. Uh, based on improving the palate as just getting used to the products. Like you can't get used to them if you never had them. You know what I mean? Like you got to drink through them. You got to taste them, taste them, taste them, taste to get used to them. So it's, it's like you can't know a product if you have no experience with the product, you know. Take care, a nice shirt. Oh, thank you. They sent it to me. Thank you, Blue Moon. We, you, says Burley Sullivan. You, take care, and a nice shirt. Oh, yeah. Let's see it. Okay, here we go. I'll show you. You caught me. I was about to press the button. Here we go. Now, the first thing that caught my eye was this package was different. It's a lot different packaging than the Paps Blue Ribbon I've been seeing on the shelves for years. So it's a squared off rectangular box. So I said, this is different. This is a thicker cardboard. And I, as soon as I saw it, it caught my eye. I said, whoa, I already opened it. So then I started looking. I said, I got to see this. I got to look at this. So I'm looking around. And then at the bottom, it says Latrobe. It says Paps Brewing Company, Latrobe, Pennsylvania. I said, Latrobe, that's City Brewing. I said, it's finally arrived. 
It has finally arrived. The new Pabst City Brewing Edition. No longer brewed by Miller Coors, Molson Coors. Now brewed by City Brewing. So I took the bottles out. Start looking at them. The bottles are the same exact bottles as my old, older bottles. So they didn't change the design at all. But they did change what's on the label. On the side, now it's got the ABV. It says 4.7. Now, they were calling it 4.8 for a little while. But this, this one here from City Brewing in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, says right there, Paps Brewing Company. Yeah, nothing says Latrobe like Paps, right? Pennsylvania, beer, 4.7%. I said, oh, boy. So I had to get it, you know, $12.49 for the 12-pack. Is that a good price? Not really. I can get Schlitz, I get Schlitz for uh, 50 cents cheaper, $11.99 for a 12-pack of Schlitz. And that's from uh, City Brewing in Wisconsin. But there it is. It finally arrived here April 2024. It is on the shelves, folks. Get ready. Get ready to roll. Yeah, you like the new packaging too, huh? I'm going to try the new PBR this week, says Bart Robinson. <laughs> that Paps case looks retro. Very cool. Retro? Um, looks like an older one. Um, do you prefer bottle beer over canned? I do as long as the bottles are not clear. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, the 30 pack of Paps they had for $23.99. I would have bought the 30 pack of cans, except that uh those were still the Miller. So the cans that came into that store are still the Miller cans. Miller brewing. It's it's the Miller can, but the bottles now coming from uh City in Latrobe. So I think pretty soon the cans will be uh, coming from City Brewing. And if if City Brewing's putting out this many bottled, if City Brewing's putting out all these bottles, that means we might be getting some Schlitz bottles soon enough. I think I talked to a store manager this morning. He said craft beer has just crashed. He told me, I didn't ask for this comment. He just brought it up. He says, he asked me, you tried any new beers? I said, yeah. And before I could tell him what beers I tried, he didn't really care. I, he says, man, the craft beer market is just terrible. I said, what you mean? It's not selling? No. He said, no. Well, he would know more than me. He's, he runs a store. He said, now it just never moves i mean it will trickle out the store but 10 years ago it'd be flying off the shelves now they'd be praying pe for people to buy it i said that's amazing you know he said I, I just can't get over it so now they're reluctant to bring in craft beer but they got to bring it in because they got to be the craft beer store you know of the of the area so but it's like oh man they're bringing all this craft beer and just put on the shelf so it can be like a museum piece he was disgusted PBR has that white wine taste to me. So you need, well, mm, I don't know about it anymore. I tried the new one today. I had it chilled down for over two hours. I put it in the freezer before I did this video. And um, I was thinking about it. I said, I don't know, man. It doesn't seem to have that whininess like they cut out the Carlsberger yeast. This one has the sour lager flavor, you know, that sourness. Uh, like a lager, not like a sour beer, which are more tart. They're not really sour. They're more like tart. It's similar to the Schlitz, but the Schlitz was a lot, a lot more sour. I need to do some taste challenges. Maybe I could do Paps Blue Ribbon, the new edition versus Tecate, because I got some Tecate. They're both corn-based, you know, corn adjunct. And I could, then I could go up against the new Schlitz. Hmm, that might be some very good challenges. Okay, we have to close this up. I could have, I could. I miss those old school dank IPA products. Oh, yeah, the good old days. Now it's fruit salad, right? Uh, I could understand why he'd say that. Is there a more oversaturated market than craft beer? 
I guess streaming movies. <laughs> There's a lot of streaming movies out there, which I never watched. They look so terrible, you know. I don't mean because of they're immoral or nasty or anything. I did just look like they're terrible, like the quality would be so bad. I see these advertisements and I'm like, I would never watch that. Streaming now on whatever platform, I'm like, oh man, they have so many low budget and they flood the market and people are watching them. Uh, are, well, are people watching them? That's a good question. First one was solid. Oh, they changed the PBR recipe. That's now I'm not saying they changed the recipe. Don't get me wrong. I did not say they changed the recipe. I said it tastes like they changed the recipe. In my opinion, it seems like something has, has changed. I could buy some pap. You know what? I could buy some Miller Paps. Oh, I have to find some cans. I'm not buying a whole bunch of it, though. I could. Hmm. Where could I find some single 24-ounce cans? Hmm. I'm not going to make a big investment in Paps Blue Ribbon cans. Yeah. Well, let me see what I can do. And if if possible, if possible, I'll do a Paps older versus newer 2024 edition. You know, earlier 24, later 2024, Miller Brewing versus uh, City Brewing uh, Paps and see if there's a difference. I mean, I think there will be, yes. Would it, would it be major? Mm, maybe not. I'm just happy. I'm not happy with the new Schlitz. Oh, you don't like it either, huh? I'm not thrilled with it. I don't hate it. I'm not going to say I hate it. I don't hate it. But it's a shame that they, they gave up on the uh, old gusto with that real strong hop action. But I guess some people thought it was too bitter. <laughs> to me, it was like great, you know. Look for a single 24 ounce PBR at a gas station. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna um, you know. Yep, 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 yep. I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled. And if I find it, I'll do it. If I can't, I won't stress on it. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Oh, yeah, great idea. All right, y'all take care now. Bye-bye.